God is good. And all the time. Yes, I greet all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, today is the last Sunday of the month. We have started a topic. And uh, today it will be the last day we, for our topic. How to get the mind of God. Hallelujah. And our main scripture was Isaiah 55 verse 8. Where the Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Hallelujah. My ways are not your ways. So the ways of God are not our ways. The thoughts of God are not our thoughts. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, As heavens and earth they are separated, is the same way our thoughts are separated from the thought of God. Hallelujah. The reason God gave us this topic is for us to always be conscious that the way we think and the way God thinks, they are different. Hallelujah. And it is our assignment always to seek the mind of God. Now, you receive salvation for free. Tell your neighbor, you receive salvation for free. But you don't receive the mind of God for free. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, there is a price to pay. Tell again your neighbor, there is a price to pay. So you receive salvation for free, but you don't receive the mind of God for free. You have to pay a price. This is the reason why the Bible says, the glory of the Lord is to seal matter, but the glory of the king is to search. So if you think about the searching, it means that you have to give time. And at that time that you give for you to seek and search the mind of God, it's a price that you pay. The Lord spoke to Joshua and said that this book should not depart from your lips. Hallelujah. So the, I can speak to you now. I can give you the direction for your life, but for you to succeed and that to have a, a strategy and the wisdom, you need to pay a price. Meditate on this book day and night. Hallelujah. Nights are not meant only for sleep. Nights are meant for getting revelation. Hallelujah. So if you want to get more revelation, you must know how to sacrifice your time during the day and to sacrifice your time during the night. Hallelujah. Then we spoke about how getting my, the mind of the Lord for your life, for a season, for a particular circumstance, for a certain problem that you may have. Hallelujah. And we spoke about how spending long hours in God's presence exercises our spirit and make our spirit very sensitive to know how to get the mind of God. Hallelujah. One may get a vision, but still not getting the mind of God. One may have a prophecy and still not getting the mind of God. Hallelujah. One may have a thousand dreams, but are failing to get the mind of God. And we saw how the Apostle Paul, they prophesied about him. And they used him not to go to Jerusalem because according to the revelation that they received, when the Apostle Paul will be in uh, Jerusalem, he will suffer. They will persecute him. So, telling him not to go was not the mind of God. Tell your neighbor, you may have a prophecy, but still not catching the mind of God. Hallelujah. You see that even when you receive a vision, your mind has the capacity to influence your decision making. And to determine which direction that you may take. So you may see a vision that can speak about calamity. That can speak about the suffering. 
your flesh, your mind will give you a direction because as a human being, you will be filled with a fear. Then a fear may direct you. Uh, am I talking to somebody? I pray that you should not be directed by your mind in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why we needed to grow. And the earth, on top of receiving revelations, on top of receiving visions, on top of receiving prophecies, we need higher discernment. We need maturity. This is the reason why we needed to grow in the things of God. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Tell your neighbor, spend more time in God's presence. Now, what I want to tell you, don't pray hard only when you are in trouble. Can I repeat it? Don't spend more time in God's presence only when you are in trouble. Why? Because if your spirit is not exercised enough to fellowship with the Lord, even that particular time, it, you may take too much time or it may be difficult for you to know what God is thinking or what are the thoughts of the Lord for that particular problem. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why if you see the background of Joshua, the Bible says, the Lord will speak to Moses face to face as he's speaking with a friend. He will be staying there in God's presence. Moses will go, but Joshua will remain at the tabernacle. He will remain in God's presence. So you see that this is the background of a someone who exercises his spirit to be in God's presence. This is the reason why it was easy for the Lord to speak to him. Hallelujah. He knew what he was called for. And every time there was a challenge, there was a problem, when he will stay again long hours in God's presence, God will speak to him. Now you must know something. As we said it, to fight for your destiny is something good. But getting the mind of God is a bigger search for your destiny. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Your success depends on on you getting the mind of God and direction of the Lord. And the devil wants us to be in distraction. Hallelujah. Your future does not depend on your plan of today. But it does not mean that don't plan. You may plan, but the Bible says, submit your work to the Lord. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? And I don't want, neither your qualifications, neither your skills, Know your capacity to tell you that the things will work for you tomorrow. But you must know that there is someone who can make a decision for things to work. So this is the reason why even when you are working, you become successful in what you are doing. Don't forget that you still need the mind of God all the time. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why we must know that we don't only spend the time in a prayer for asking, but we must know how to do the prayer of fellowship so that uh, you and the Father, you are used to each other. Hallelujah. Uh, let me tell you something. When Tepi was singing here, hallelujah, when I said, I will be there, Hallelujah. My wife also, I will all, she's with a very big voice, she said, I will be there. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, do you know why she said that? Hallelujah. Amen. Before even she is seen, she was telling me, I'm waiting for Ella. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when I saw Tepi coming, I knew that she will tell me Ella because this is what she always like. 
Am I talking to somebody? So by staying with someone, even a small word, you will know why is this person saying this. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why sometimes when the Lord wants to direct us, even want to speak to us, He may not say a lot. He will give you just one word. So because you are used to Him, hallelujah, you will know what does it mean. Hallelujah. So we want to be this a Christian. We are having a deep intimacy and a deep relationship with the Lord. So speaking to us is not God's priority, but having intimacy and relationship is a God of priority. Hallelujah. Because the Lord may speak to you, but uh, you may not know what to do with what is uh, telling you. And uh, if your intimacy, your relationship with the Lord is not a good when the Lord speaks to you, it will be easy for you to disobey him. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, I gave you an example one day that I was very tired. But the Lord said that you have to go. Hallelujah. Because tonight, as a, the leader of intercession, I want prayer. So no excuse for you. And it was around midnight. Amen. That time, I, I was not even having transport. But the Lord spoke to me. Because he spoke to me, I said, okay, I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. When I just went out, a car was waiting for me. It was a pastor who was there. He was talking to someone. Then he told me, ah, man of God, how are you? Where are you going? I said, I'm going to, to church. He said, okay, please, can you come in? I'm going to drop you. Hallelujah. So, then, I think the... Was it the same week or the following week? I found myself in the same circumstances. The Lord spoke to me and said, go. Hallelujah. I went again. That time, I, they, there were no car. Then I said to the Lord, I will walk. I don't know if I will meet people who can take things from me, but I will obey the Lord. As I was going... I just, a taxi was passing there and stopped. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to church. I said, ah, we have closed. Actually, we are going home. But what is the direction? I gave them the direction. They say, we are going in that direction. Hallelujah. Then they drop me. I give them money. They say, no. As you are going to pray, tell the Lord, we also contribute to the prayer. Hallelujah. Now, when you are praying, you are having such experiences with the Lord. If the Lord asks you to do something, you will say, I know my father. Uh, am I talking to somebody? So, it may be small, but there are experiences that you must have with the Lord. And that those experiences, they are, they are drawing you more close to the Lord, and they must push you to seek more the Lord. So that you are used to him, and you are having personal secret with the Lord. And that when the Lord say, go, you will go. Hallelujah. When the Lord say, stop, you will stop. Because you are having some experiences with the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Now, if you spend more time in God's presence, it's easy for you to receive such small instructions. And all the time, the Lord will give you such instruction. You will see certain manifestations. Those manifestations, they become part of you. Hallelujah. This is the reason why when David was coming to before Goliath, he said, no, I have an experience with the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I have an experience with the Lord. In the secret there, there are things that are happening between me and the Lord. I pray. Everyone must have experience with the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord visit you in Jesus' mighty name. May your spirit be again open. Hallelujah. It's time for us to go deeper and seek deeper fellowship, strong intimacy, strong relationship with the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Otherwise, you may receive a vision. You want to know whether it's coming from the Lord. You want to know whether it will come in from the darkness. You will receive a dreams. You want to know that it will come from the Lord. You want to know that it will come from the darkness. You will receive prophecies. You want to know whether it will come from the Lord. You want to know when it's coming from the darkness. This is the reason why the woman who was possessed with a spirit of divination was uh, telling people, prophesizing that this is a man of God. Is uh, telling you the way of salvation. But there is somebody who was uh, having a strong relationship with the Father. He recognized that I don't need the devil to do publicity for me. Hallelujah. He recognized that this is a spirit of divination and say, I command you in Jesus' mighty name, out. Somebody say, out. Hallelujah. We are in an era of confusion. Amen. And let me tell you what will show that, that this man is genuine is not the prophecy. It's not a certain sign. You need to have deep relationship with the Lord. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So that if the people, they prophesy to the spirit of divination, you will be able to know. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of my sons received someone who prophesies upon him and uh, telling him very deep amen but the only assignment that was before behind the prophecies was to remove him from the church hallelujah but the Lord spoke already and he recognized that that man was prophesying to the spirit of divination uh, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. And you know most of the time while, when the devil is planning for something, today he will come and tell you something and you see the manifestation. Tomorrow you see the manifestation. Hallelujah. The next day you see again the manifestation. Then you receive a wrong direction. Tell your neighbor it's time to grow. Tell again your neighbor it's time to grow. Tell again, whenever it's time to grow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But the reason the Lord is giving us this, the first reason God wants us to be able to get his mind all the time and to know how to fulfill the will of God. Hallelujah. Listen, even for you to pray. The Bible says even to pray, you need to pray according to the will of God. Remember when I was talking about the will of God. I told you that the Bible said we must know the will of God. Hallelujah. We must be filled with the understanding or the knowledge of the will of God. But you must also pray according to the will of God. You must fight for the fulfillment of the will of God. Say, there are a lot of dimensions. Hallelujah. But what you have to know, and I repeat it, spend more hours with the Lord. No matter how busy you may be, don't present God's excuses, present God's sacrifices. Tell your neighbor now, serious master are starting. Don't present God's excuses, but present God sacrifices. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are not used to the Lord, when certain things will happen in your life, you won't be able to recognize that there are spiritual opportunities. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Uh, when we were going for outreach yesterday, one of my daughters said, Papa, I'm not coming. I can say it, Mama. I said, Papa, I'm not coming because my son is sick. Hallelujah. I gave him the answer. Myself, I'm sick. My wife, as I'm talking, she's sick. My daughter is sick. Me, my wife, and my daughter, we are going. 
Uh, am I talking to somebody? Why? Because I know my God. Every time I want to do something that is sickness, I know the opportunity is behind. Hallelujah. You know, there are times that God will ask to trust him. But there are times that God must trust you. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for the Lord to trust you, you must know all the opportunities God may blame. Hallelujah. They come as a, things that are coming to destroy you, but the opportunities are that the Lord may trust you. Ah, am I talking to somebody? So my sickness, I knew that it's a divine opportunity for me. Hallelujah. We went there. The daughter was doing fevers. We didn't see fever when we were there preaching. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Now, if you don't know that there are times that God may put you in a school where he must bring you in a level of trust, you may lose a lot of spiritual opportunities. Hallelujah. You may lose the fulfillment of prophecies, of fulfillment of your promises, or even delaying because you felt recognizing spiritual opportunities. God is good, and all the time. Then when I spoke, my daughter came. Hallelujah. But I haven't received the testimony, but I know that I will receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, know how to get the mind of God. <clears throat> Being sick when you want to do the work of God does not mean rest. Hallelujah. So you must ask the Lord why this is coming. The Lord will direct you. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't bring excuses but always bring sacrifices listen our kingdom operates with sacrifices amen Daniel chapter 11 verse 31 the Bible say and the forces shall be mastered by him and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress. And they shall take away the daily sacrifice. And the place, the abomination of desolation. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to understand something. And this is what will bring us to the topic that we'll be having next month. Amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 24, the Lord is saying that wickedness will increase and something will happen, the love of many will grow cold. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter 18, the Lord is saying, when the Son of Man, is it going to find faith? Hallelujah. So there are three things that the devil wants to destroy. And as the end times, the first thing is daily sacrifices. Tell your neighbor daily sacrifices. Number two, faith. Number three, say love. So this is what the devil is awaking in order to remove in church. Because most of the time, we want to uh, measure our relationship of the greatness of God in our lives only by solving our problems. Hallelujah. And today, our relationship with the Lord, what the devil wants, 
is to be based only on asking and receiving. Hallelujah. Lord, I need a job. Tomorrow I get. Hallelujah. My God is great. Hallelujah. Lord, I need a promotion. I got. I come again and I testify. But if there is any delay or I don't see, what will happen? My faith. Hallelujah. Will go down. Am I talking to somebody? And you can see around us, the more things are becoming difficult, the more wickedness is rising, the love of many is going, is growing cold. Let the love that you have for God not growing cold. Hallelujah. But the main things that we must maintain in our life, the Bible says, in the end of time, the spirit of the Antichrist will work very hard and they remove in the sanctuary, the daily sacrifice. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why there is a wake-up call again at this morning. You must know that the kingdom of God operates with sacrifices, not with excuses. Your tightness is not an excuse for the Lord. Hallelujah. Being busy is not an excuse. But it is an opportunity for what you do for the Lord to be a sacrifice. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So from now on, I want you to change your minds. And I pray that your capacity to perceive spiritual things must change. When you are tired, don't consider it as an obstacle. Consider it as an opportunity to make what you do for the Lord to be a sacrifice. Because the work of the Antichrist is to remove the daily sacrifice. Hallelujah. So this is the reason why there are less personal prayers. There are less personal fasting. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's a work of the darkness to remove daily sacrifices. There was a time when the people of Israel separated. Then... There was Israel and the Judah at the other side. They attacked Judah. They said, please, don't attack us. Because us, we are different from you. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. You, you have, the, you have chased away the priest of the Lord. But us, we still have the priest with us. Every day, somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. Somebody say every day. I they say every day. The sacrifice is there. Hallelujah. They place the showbread there. Hallelujah. So we advise you not to attack us. Because if you attack us, you will fail because the Lord is with us. Why? Because daily sacrifice is there. The fire is burning day and night. Tell your neighbor, let the fire burn every day. Hallelujah. Spending long hours in God's presence, it's a sacrifice. Fasting, it's a sacrifice. Giving your offerings, it's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. You see now why in the end times, even in church, people are scared to speak about offerings. Hallelujah. Because a good pastor does not speak about money. Hallelujah. A man of God who does not speak about offering about money is not spiritual. Ah, am I talking to somebody? It's the pride of the flesh. Hallelujah. Why? Because we want approval from men than approval from God. It is not because other people, they abuse this with offering. Then we should not speak about it. The work of the Antichrist is to remove daily sacrifices. Hallelujah. Your offering that you give to the Lord are sacrifices. The time that you must kill, the time that you must give to the Lord, they are sacrifices. So the work of the Antichrist is to remove the daily sacrifices. Hallelujah. Then we must uh, now 
be very intelligent and have spiritual insight when you see that matter becoming difficult you must have God's perception hallelujah because God wants what you do for him to get a dimension of sacrifice ah, am I talking to somebody hallelujah you may be struggling with financially hallelujah that struggle it's an opportunity for your offering to be a really sacrifice ah, am I talking to somebody the one who's not struggling financially, who easily give. Hallelujah. The weight that is in the spirit with the one who's struggling financially is different. Ah, hallelujah. So don't take your financial problems as an hindrance for you to sacrifice for the Lord. But get it as an opportunity that your offering will be really a sacrifice. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. I want you to say preach again. Preach again when you are talking about offerings. When you are talking about money. I want you to encourage me and say preach again. Preach again. Preach again. Say again. Preach again. Preach again. Hallelujah. Because the spirit of poverty wants us not to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I start the ministry, the Lord brought me in the house of a man of God. He was a CEO with a, a strong, a very big company. Hallelujah. It, is all, it was an old company. Amen. So the Lord blessed him too much. When I went there, we went to visit him. He was telling, he was saying, uh, he was a pastor and the CEO of the company. Hallelujah. In my church, I don't take offering. Hallelujah. I, people, they don't pay tithe. Amen. As he was talking, the Lord said that I brought you here for you to see this and never mis be, do a mistake. You know, after I think few time, he was no more in God's presence. He abandoned the things of God. He went back in the world. The Lord told me that I brought you there for you never to despise sacrifices. Because as you'll be serving me, you'll be working and you'll also serve me. But may your salary not despise sacrifices. Tell your neighbor, don't despise sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, don't despise sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, don't despise sacrifice. Tell again your neighbor, don't despise sacrifice. So the devil wants you to despise sacrifices. Hallelujah. Amen. So most of the time, if you have to speak about offering, people, they become cold. Please encourage me, say, preach again. No, I don't feel it. I don't feel I want to feel it. I want to feel it. I want to feel it. Hallelujah. The secret of the kingdom must not be hidden from us. Hallelujah. Because the work of the Antichrist is to remove the daily sacrifices. Hallelujah. If they, somebody will tell you, you know when the devil wants to encourage you to remove you, he wants to come as a devil. He will come like someone. You, you are going to make rich your pastors. And then you say, ah, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Listen, we don't make rich people. Somebody say, I know my God. Oh, somebody say again, I know my God. You must have a secret with the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, some, uh, one day when we wanted to buy some speakers, hallelujah, someone came and I think gave 15,000 or something like that. I don't remember. Hallelujah. 
It's only after we have bought the instrument, the person came and said, Pastor, you know that that money was the money of the school fees of my daughter. I said to her, thank God you didn't tell me. Because if you told me before, I don't think that in my flesh I could have accepted that. Hallelujah. But when the person was coming and said that I'm having a testimony, because after giving the school fees of my daughter, this is what God has given me. Hallelujah. For people to do such, you must have personal secret with the Lord. Then I understood that the person was having secret with the Lord. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Now, you see that even for you to be giving, you need to have a relationship with the Lord. You will know what to do. And you will, it will be difficult for the power of the Antichrist to stop the daily sacrifices. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Now, listen today. What should be your priority is your relationship with the Lord. Spend more time with the Lord. So, so that when there is a move of the darkness, you will be able to recognize it. So spending time in God's presence helps us not only to recognize the move of God, but also to recognize the move of the enemy. And to know how to stop it. And to know how to resist. Tell your neighbor, know how to resist. Tell your neighbor, know how to resist. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday, after we went for outreach, hallelujah, when I went back home, I was not healed. I became more sick. Hallelujah. Why am I telling you this? Because I was, I was asking the Lord to explain to me. Amen. But I found myself because I have to sleep because of sickness. Hallelujah. But when I sleep, when I wake up, I was healed. Amen. Then I wanted to understand what the Lord want to teach me. Hallelujah. You must know how to pay the price. Hallelujah. And when you pay your price, don't have your own expectations. But let the Lord do things for you. Hallelujah. Don't say, okay, as I'm sick, I'm going there. While I will be there, the sickness will go away. No. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, let the Lord do his work. In his own way. And as he explained it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we are having wrong expectations. What the wrong expectation will do. It will discourage us. Hallelujah. It will remove our faith. Because you are having wrong expectations. I'm here to tell somebody. If you are expecting something you don't see. It does not that God is not with you. God is still with you. Hallelujah. Because the reward. Oh, am I talking to somebody? The Lord himself will prepare it. Hallelujah. And I was sharing, I was uh, sharing uh, this testimony yesterday as uh, we were there preaching to people. I remember one day we went for outreach with Bishop. He said, we're walking everywhere. We're, after praying the whole night, we were preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. But we didn't even have a food. Amen. Then when we came back, hallelujah, you see, we have worked with the Lord. What do you expect? A big miracle. Somebody say a big miracle. And the Lord operates a miracle. Do you know the miracle? Someone came to give us a bread. Mama Titi. Hallelujah. And another one came to give, a, I think it was something like 20 rand, but it was enough just to buy sugar. Hallelujah. So after serving too much, the Lord, he has operated a miracle. Then you just take water. 
you put the sugar and you eat the bread, you sleep. Hallelujah. Then during the night, Rebaka Darabasaka, as I was praying, the Lord released a word. Hallelujah. You may not see a reward today, but the Lord explain a reward for you tomorrow. Hallelujah. So your faith should not uh, grow cold. Your love should not grow cold for the Lord. When you have an impression that you have given too much to the Lord, you have an impression that the Lord has forsaken you. He said that he's a faithful. He will never abandon you. He will never forsake you. Hallelujah. Don't destroy your sacrifices. Hallelujah. Through worries and anxieties. Hallelujah. You have already a lot of good records in heaven. But don't destroy your record. So this is the reason why we need to be careful. Daily sacrifices must be there. Your faith needs to be strong. And your love for the Lord still needs to be the same. Don't accept the devil to destroy these three things in your life. Somebody say sacrifices. Somebody say faith. Somebody say love. Somebody say love. Don't accept the devil to destroy them. Hallelujah. This is the reason why this month that we are starting, we want to revive, hallelujah, our, our spirit of sacrifices. Amen. Tell your neighbor spirit of sacrifices. Somebody say again spirit of sacrifices. Somebody say again, spirit of sacrifices. And with the spirit of sacrifices, God needs our availability than our readiness. Because the Holy Spirit is ready for you. He wants just you to be available. Tell your neighbor, just be available. Tell again your neighbor, the Lord wants you to be available. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 9. The Bible says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Asherah, of the lineage of Medes, who was uh, made the king of uh, the realm of Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that it would accomplish 70 years of desolation in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Now, while I was speaking, praying, confessing my sin, the sin of my people, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom have a sin in the vision, at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reach me about the time of the evening offering. Somebody say evening offering. Hallelujah. Listen, offerings, they determine spiritual times. Am I talking to somebody? This is part of the things that we'll see next month. Offerings, they determine spiritual times. Hallelujah. Why Gabriel didn't come before the time, close to the time of the evening offering? So this is the reason why we have to understand about the sacrifices and the offerings. How was it meant and what is the spiritual meaning and all the spiritual things are happening. Beyond your sacrifice, an angelic movement can be provoked. Hallelujah. Now, season are determined by the visitation that you receive from the Lord. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Now, you provoke seasons through your offerings and sacrifices. Hallelujah. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? I'm already at the end, but I'm just introducing the next month. 
Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, seasons are determined by offering and sacrifices. Seasons are determined by offering and sacrifices. Hallelujah. God is good. It's only when Jesus went at the cross that his sacrifices did change the season, changing from the law to the grace. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Without that sacrifice, there could not be change. Sacrifices are meant to change time and situation in, in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. You see that there was a word that was there. But someone has to discover that word. He has to spend the time in God's presence. Hallelujah. At the time of the evening offering, then he received a visitation. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody, the time your visitation is here. The time for things to change is here. The time for the spirit, the shift in the spiritual realm is here. This is your time. This is your season. Hallelujah. It's a time to wake up. Hallelujah. And it's a time that the Lord must trust you. Hallelujah. You are thinking about trusting the Lord, but the Lord wants to trust you. Tell your neighbor the Lord wants to trust you. Tell your neighbor the Lord wants to trust you. May we stand and pray. I want you to proclaim you know what sacrifice is also a dimension of the spirit hallelujah we want to be Christian with a spirit of sacrifice hallelujah why because it will help you to stop the plan of the darkness it will help you to escape what the darkness is preparing against you. Hallelujah. We want to be Christians that the Lord easily trusts. Hallelujah. I want you to pray for your faith. I want you to pray for your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Pray as the Holy Spirit is leading you. Pray as the Holy Spirit is leading you this morning. From beginning to the end. Zabagaraba Sakareba. Zababaya. Zadekaraba Sakayaka. Jesus be the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it will always be you, Jesus. Jesus.
listen. When the Lord is talking to you about sacrifices, it's not that He wants you to be going always in a in a very difficult situation. No. Hallelujah. It's because He wants to release His favor and His grace. Sacrifices made Daniel to ascend to higher positions. And the sacrifices help him to maintain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are having a lot of promises. But there is something that must trigger it. Then there is something that must make you to go from glory to glory. And uh, by going glory to glory, you maintain yourself in that matter. That thing is called sacrifices. So if the Lord is speaking to you about a, a spirit of sacrifices, it's because you know that is a favor is coming. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Zabaga dagayaka. Zababa. Yes. Sing, give the song. Zabaga dagaraba. Just lift up your hands while the choir is singing. Zagada gabayaka. Zabaga